Dear all, welcome to my talk on the Ehlers Danlos syndromes and the differential diagnosis of hypermobility. My name is Francisca Malfe and I'm a clinical geneticist and researcher at the Center for Medical Genetics at the Ghent University Hospital in Belgium. The Ehlers Danlos syndromes have fascinated people throughout the ages. This is the first photograph on your left side of a patient with EDS. His name was Felix Wehrle, also known as the Elastic Skin Man. For many years, no fairground was complete without an India rubber man, elastic lady or human pretzel. Collectively enjoyed as curiosities, many affected individuals earned their livings by amazing their audiences with contortionist tricks or an astonishing ability to stretch their skin. The first medical description of some of the characteristics of the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes, or EDS, is credited to Job Janszoon van Meekeren, a Dutch surgeon from Amsterdam, who in 1657 observed a Spanish boy, George Alba, who had extreme extensibility of the skin, unusually though only at the right side of his body, as you can see. Credit for the first comprehensive description of a syndrome displaying laxity and fragility of the skin associated with hypermobility of the joints goes to the Russian dermatologist Chernogubov. His report was, however, largely overlooked in Western Europe, likely because it was written in Russian. Two dermatologists, Edward Ehlers and Harry Alexandre Danlo, separately described affected individuals in 1901 and 1908 respectively. And around 1936, the syndrome received its eponymous title and as such became a scientifically respectable condition. Those first clinical descriptions share the presence of the major hallmarks of EDS, the combination of hyperextensible and fragile skin and loose jointedness or joint hypermobility. Early clues to the pathogenic basis of EDS came from ultrastructural studies. In 1955, Janssen, a Dutch dermatologist, studied the skin of two patients with EDS by means of electron microscopy. He concluded, we believe that the whole Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is based on the existence of an insufficient twining of the collagen elements in the dermis, hypodermis and the joints, thus suggesting for the first time that the defect underlying EDS affects the collagen wickerwork. Further clues to an important role for collagen in the physiopathology of EDS came from biochemical studies in the 70s. In 1971, Lapierre and colleagues identified a defect in the conversion of a precursor co molecule, procollagen, to mature collagen in tissues of cattle with dermatosparaxis, that is Greek for torn skin. The dermis of these animals was shown to contain loosely packed, thin and twisted, ribbon-like collagen fibrils that displayed a typical hieroglyphic aspect on cross-section. Biochemical studies revealed that the animals failed to process an amino terminal precursor peptide called PN collagen from the three chains of type 1 collagen. Two years later, Liechtenstein and co workers identified three human patients with a form of EDS, characterized by severe joint hypermobility and congenital bilateral hip dislocation, whose dermis also showed an accumulation of these PN collagen molecules. A second biochemical clue for the involvement of collagen came from studies from Pinel and co-workers who found the deficient hydroxylation of lysyl residues in collagen in two siblings with a form of EDS characterized by severe scoliosis, muscle hypotonia, joint hypermobility and skin fragility. A third biochemical clue came from studies by Mike Pope on postmortem tissue samples from a patient with what was later known as the vascular type of EDS, and he found a deficiency of type 3 collagen, especially in the skin and in the aorta. With the introduction of sequencing techniques in the 80s, the first mutations were being identified in genes encoding collagen 1 and collagen 3. 
and the combination of ultrastructural, biochemical and molecular studies with the clinical observations made it clear that EDS was not one disease, but a clinically and genetically heterogeneous group of heritable disorders of connective tissue characterized by skin hyperextensibility and fragility, joint hypermobility and generalized friability, mainly of the soft connective tissues including vascular fragility. The elucidation of the biochemical and molecular basis of several types of EDS resulted in the 1997 Villefranche nosology, this classification recognized six EDS subtypes based on clinical characteristics, mode of inheritance and biochemical or molecular findings. For each of these types, except for the hypermobility type, defects had been found either in genes coding for fibrillar collagens, collagen type 1, 3 and 5, or collagen modifying molecules. Classical Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, previously known as EDS type 1 and 2, is an autosomal dominant condition with an estimated prevalence of around 1 in 20,000. It is caused by pathogenic variants in the genes coding for type 5 collagen, col 5A1 and col 5A2. Type 5 collagen is a minor fibrillar collagen that co-localizes with type 1 collagen in the connective tissues and it forms heterotypic fibrils with the type 1 collagen. Studies in humans and in mouse models for classical EDS have revealed that type 5 collagen has a key role in the fibrillogenesis of collagen fibrils. It acts as a nucleator through its amino terminal propeptide and in patients with classical EDS you typically see very large cauliflower-like abnormalities of collagen fibrils in the dermis as depicted here on the right side. Here you can see some of the key manifestations of classical EDS. With the skin hyperextensibility, this means that the skin snaps back after release and takes back its original shape which is different from cuties laxa. The formation of these thin, wide, atrophic scars and the deposition of hemosiderin, for instance on the shins, which is also due to easy bruising. The skin typically has a very soft, velvety and doughy texture. Joint hypermobility is usually marked and generalized, and here you can see an example of severe hypermobility of the finger joints with small neck deformities. It can be associated with complications such as club feet, scoliosis, dislocations, and pain. The clue towards the diagnosis of classical EDS really is the combination of this skin hyperextensibility and the soft skin with the atrophic scarring and the generalized joint hypermobility. Joint hypermobility is usually assessed with the Byton scale. This is a nine point scale in which you assess hypermobility in number of joints as depicted here. A score of at least 6 out of 9 is considered to reflect generalized joint hypermobility in the prepubertal age, whereas in adults, up until the age of 50, a score of at least 5 out of 9 is considered positive. Other manifestations of classical EDS include molluscoid pseudotumors and subcutaneous spheroids, hernias, epicantal folds and a family history of a first-degree relative who meets the clinical criteria. We recently performed a retrospective study on 143 index patients and their affected family members presenting with a classical EDS phenotype. In 86% of these we found a causal defect, in 6% we found a variant of unknown significance and 8% remains unexplained at the molecular level. Of the pathogenic variants identified, 82% resided in the COL5A1 gene and only 16% in the COL5A2 gene. The majority of the COL5A1 mutations, about 60%, lead to non-functional COL5A1 allele with the introduction of a premature termination codon. The other identified mutations were a few glycine substitutions in the helical domain of the collagen chain and a few in-frame exon skips. In the COL5A2 gene, we only found structural defects and no non-functional alleles. Clinically, we did not find clear genotype-phenotype correlations, except for the fact that COL5A2 mutations appear to be associated 
with a more severe presentation. For instance, those patients had more club feet, congenital hip dislocation or severe scoliosis. And quite a few of them had previously been diagnosed with another type of EDS, such as kyphoscoliotic type or dermatosparaxis type. Vascular complications, on the other hand, were very rare, both in the group with COL5A1 and COL5A2 mutations. We also found three patients with a specific mutation in the COL1A1 gene, an arginine to cysteine substitution at position 312. This mutation was first identified in 2000 in two unrelated children who presented the typical skin and joint manifestations of classical EDS. And we recently saw one of those two patients for follow-up and you can see the pictures of his skin and a severe pectus deformity here. We also found the same mutation a few years later in a family where the mother suffered a spontaneous rupture of a medium-sized artery at young age, raising the suspicion of vascular EDS. The mutation has now been reported a few times in families presenting a phenotype that mimics classical EDS, sometimes with, but sometimes without the presence of arterial rupture. It remains an important differential diagnosis in patients where there is a suspicion of vascular EDS because of arterial rupture, but where no col collagen-3 mutations are found. Now, vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, previously known as EDS type 4, is an autosomal, autosomal dominant condition with an estimated prevalence that ranges between 1 in 200,000 and 1 in 50,000. It is caused by pathogenic variants in the COL3A1 gene that codes for type 3 collagen. Type 3 collagen is a major fibrillar collagen that co-localizes with type 1 collagen and that is mainly present in elastic tissues such as the blood vessel wall, the uterus and the gastrointestinal tract. Studies have suggested a regulatory role for type 3 collagen in determining the collagen fibril diameter. Major clinical criteria for the diagnosis of vascular EDS include a family history of vascular EDS with a documented causative variant in COL3A1. However, you need to be careful because about 50% of probands have no family history. An arterial rupture at young age, a spontaneous sigmoid colon perforation in the absence of known diverticular disease or other bowel pathology a uterine rupture during the third trimester in the absence of a previous C-section and or severe peripartum perineum tears and a carotid cavernous sinus fistula in the absence of trauma. Patients with vascular EDS usually do not have a hyperextensible skin but a thin and translucent skin uh, and their skin can also have an old appearance, which is called acrogeria. They usually suffer from severe bruising and sometimes also from early onset varicose veins. They can have a characteristic facial appearance as depicted here in these pictures. And other signs and symptoms include joint hypermobility that is usually restricted to the small joints, tendon and muscle ruptures, talipes equinovarius and congenital hip dislocations, and spontaneous or recurrent pneumothorax. The patients reported by Liechtenstein and co-workers in 1972 with the accumulation of the PN collagen molecules turned out to have the arthrochalasia type of EDS. In this type of EDS, heterozygous plyside alterations adjacent to exon 6 of either CoV1A1 or CoV1A2 lead to the skipping of part or all of the amino acids encoded by exon 6. Exon 6 in these genes codes for the aminopopeptide cleavage site and the, and the telopeptide crosslink lysine residue. These mutations thus lead to a partial processing of type 1 procollagen to form PN collagen molecules, which are then incorporated in the collagen fibrils and disturb collagen fibrillogenesis and you can appreciate the abnormalities in the collagen fibril diameter and shape uh, on these pictures here. The clinical hallmarks of this condition include the combination of congenital bilateral hip dislocation with severe generalized joint hypermobility. There is variable skin hyperextensibility and fragility 
and patients also can have a short stature, osteopenia and blue sclerae. In contrast, biallelic loss of function variants in the enzyme that cleaves off the amino terminal propeptide, the procollagen 1 aminoproteinase, also known as ADMTS2, causes dermatosparaxis type of EDS. In contrast to the arterogalasia type of EDS in which heterozygous variants in either CoA1 or CoA2 lead to the production of some normal collagen molecules, Variants in the gene for ADMTS2 render the enzyme non-functional, meaning that both the pro-alpha-1 and pro-alpha-2 chains are not cleaved into mature chains. In dermatosporaxis EDS, all type 1 collagen molecules thus have the PN structure and fibrils are completely distorted, leading to a pattern resembling hieroglyphs that when viewed in cross-section. The hallmarks of dermatosporaxis EDS like in the cattle with dermatosparaxis, are extremely fragile skin, severe bruising, and in uh, addition, uh, these patients also have some typical craniofacial characteristics. They usually have a congenital umbilical hernia, and joint hypermobility in these patients is much less severe than in the arthrogalasia type. The kyphoscoliotic type of EDS, which is caused by a deficiency of lysyl hydroxylase 1, was actually the first inborn error of human collagen metabolism to be, to be defined at the biochemical level. Lysyl hydroxylase 1 is an endoplasmic reticulum resident molecule that catalyzes the hydroxylation of lysine residues in collagens. These hydroxylysine residues have two important functions. They are essential for the stability of the intermolecular crosslinks that provide collagen fibrils with their tensile strength and mechanical stability, and they serve as attachment sites for carbohydrate units. Thus, the deficiency of the enzyme results in underhydroxylation and underglycosylation of the collagens, and as a result, the collagen alpha chains display a faster electrophoretic mobility on SDS page. Kyphoscoliotic type of EDS is clinically characterized by neonatal muscle hypotonia, progressive kyphoscoliosis, abnormal scarring and easy bruising, increased risk of fatal arterial ruptures, and in some cases also an ocular fragility. The post villefranche era experienced the proliferation of EDS types that were not incorporated into a classification scheme. One of the first ones was deficiency of tenacin X, and it was the first non-collagenous defect that was found to be implicated in a form of EDS. The total absence of tenacin X due to biallelic mutations in the tenacin X gene was found to cause a condition that clinically mimics classical EDS with the skin hyperextensibility, the joint hyperlaxity, but without the atrophic scarring and with an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. Further characterization of additional patients showed other signs such as progressive contractures, muscle hypotonia, severe foot deformities, and peripheral edema. Tenacin X is a glycoprotein of the extracellular matrix and has an important bridging role between fibril collagens, fibril associated collagens such as collagen 12 and 14, decarine, and other matrix molecules. And tenacin X as such has an important role in regulating collagen fibrillogenesis and patients with total absence of tenacin X typically have a decreased collagen fibril density in their extracellular matrix. Already in 1975, Beat Steinmann recognized that there were patients presenting a phenotype resembling kyphoscoliotic EDS or EDS type 6A, but who had a normal lysyl hydroxylase activity. He called this condition EDS type 6B. Here you see pictures of the two first Pakistani siblings that were described by Steinmann with this condition. In 2010, Tomoki Kosho reported a series of Japanese patients displaying joint and skin laxity and multisystemic fragility related manifestations combined with distinct craniofacial characteristics and multiple congenital contractures. 
They recognized that this phenotype overlapped with EDS type 6b and coined this condition EDS Kosho type. Simultaneously, our group also reported a few patients with a similar phenotype and through homozygosity mapping, biallelic mutations were identified in CHST14, both in the Japanese patients and in our patients. This link between CHST14-associated EDS and EDS6b was later confirmed when Janneke and co-workers confirmed presence of CHST14 mutations in those Pakistani siblings. CHST14 codes for dermatin 4 o sulfotransferase one an enzyme that is involved in the biosynthesis of dermatin sulfate. Proteoglycans are abundant molecules in the extracellular matrix and on the surface of cells, and they are involved in a whole range of functions. They interact with many extracellular matrix components, including collagens. Proteoglycans consist of a core protein and one or more glycosaminoglycan chains, such as heparin sulfate, chondroitin sulfate, and dermatin sulfate. CHST14 is specifically involved in the conversion of chondroitin sulfate to dermatin sulfate. One proteoglycan that is of major importance to the physiopathology of EDS is decarin. Decarin is a small leucine-rich proteoglycan that consists of a core protein and a single gag chain, which consists mainly of dermatin sulfate. Through its dermatin sulfate chain, decarin plays an important role in the assembly and organization of collagen fibrils in skin. In the skin of patients with CHST14 mutations, the dermatin sulfate in decarin is completely replaced by chondroitin sulfate, and these chondroitin sulfate chains have a different shape than the dermatin sulfate chains. These structural alterations of the gag chains causes spatial disorganization of the collagen networks, and indeed, collagen fibrils in the dermis of patients with CHST14 mutations are not regularly and tightly assembled. Not long after the identification of mutations in CHST14, we and others found mutations in another enzyme that is very important for GAG biosynthesis, that is B3-GALT6. Each glycosaminoglycan or GAG chain starts with the formation of a linker region that is common to the heparin sulfate, chondroitin sulfate and dermatin sulfate chains, and that consists of four sugar residues. It's called a tetrasaccharide linker region. b 3 galt 6 codes for galactosyl transferase 2 that specifically adds the second galactose in this tetrasaccharide linker region. This condition is clinically hallmarked by skin hyperextensibility and fragility, joint hypermobility in combination with multiple joint contractures, scoliosis, a somewhat progerate appearance with tooth abnormalities and sometimes also multiple fractures. In addition, there is a spondyloepimetaphyseal dysplasia and some patients with B3-GALT6 mutations only have the chondrodysplasia without any overt EDS signs. Mutations had previously also been identified in B4-GALT7, encoding galactosyl transferase 1, which adds the first galactose in the linker region, in a type of EDS that was then called the progeroid type. Both conditions caused by mutations in B3-GALT6 and B4-GALT7 are now called spondylodysplastic EDS. The condition caused by mutations in CHST14 and, as later shown, also in another enzyme that is important for the synthesis of dermatin sulfate, is now called musculocontractural EDS. More recently, mutations were identified in the gene FKBP14, which codes for the protein FKBP22, which is an intracellular collagen chaperone. They were found in a few patients displaying another phenotype that overlaps with kyphoscoliotic type of EDS. It is an autosomal recessive disorder that is characterized by muscle hypotonia, joint hypermobility, severe scoliosis, skin hyperextensibility, hearing loss, and as later shown, there is also an increased risk for arterial ruptures and dissections. 
With the identification of all these and some other new EDS variants, the Villefranche nosology had become outdated. And in 2016, an international EDS consortium convened in New York to establish a revision of the classification. In this new classification, which was published in 2017, 13 clinical types were withheld with mutations in 19 different genes. That this classification is and remains a dynamic process is best illustrated by the fact that not long after the 2017 publication, a 14th type of EDS was found, with mutations in ABP1 encoding a molecule that um, binds to fibrillar collagens type 1, 3 and 5 and that assists in collagen polymerization. So the hypermobile type of EDS remains the only type within this list that remains unexplained at the molecular level. One of the defining hallmarks of hypermobile EDS is generalized joint hypermobility. Now generalized joint hypermobility has a high prevalence in the general population. Estimates in the pediatric population range between 7 and 36 percent and in the adult population between 2 and 57 percent. It is influenced by factors such as age, gender and ethnicity, but also by connective tissue pliability, muscle tone, physical activity and training and joint surface alignment. The heritability of joint hypermobility was estimated to be around 70 percent but with a large intrafamilial variability. In the Villefranche criteria for hypermobile EDS, clinical criteria were defined and included besides joint hypermobility, also skin involvement, and then also recurrent joint dislocations, joint pain and a positive family history. Approximately at the same time, Clinical criteria were also defined for the joint hypermobility syndrome, and these were called the Brighton criteria. And as you can see, there is substantial overlap between those two sets of criteria, with in the Brighton criteria for joint hypermobility syndrome also inclusion of skin manifestations and signs of connective tissue fragility. As such, those two conditions were eventually considered by many to be one and same disorder, and these terms were used interchangeably both in clinical and research settings, creating a lot of confusion. In order to address this confusion, the 2017 classification redefined the clinical criteria for hypermobile EDS. And the diagnosis of hypermobile EDS now rests on three factors. The first one is the presence of generalized joint hypermobility, taking into account that joint mobility decreases with age. The second one um, rests on the presence of at least two out of three of the following factors. The first one is the presence of a combination of skin, fascia and connective tissue manifestations that I will discuss in the next slide. The second one is the presence of at least one first degree family member independently meeting the diagnostic criteria for hypermobile EDS. And the third one is the presence of musculoskeletal manifestations such as musculoskeletal pain, chronic widespread pain or joint instability. Finally, it's very important to exclude other EDS types or other heritable connective tissue disorders or other genetic conditions that can be associated with joint hypermobility. Here you can see the list of skin, fascia and connective tissue manifestations and you have to have at least five of these manifestations to meet this criterion. And so they reflect the multisystemic and syndromic nature of hypermobile EDS. One remark, aortic root dilatation is listed within uh, this list of signs. However, in a patient with joint hypermobility and some skin manifestations and aortic root dilatation, one should also consider familial thoracic aortic aneurysm syndromes, such as, for instance, Marfan syndrome or Lewis Ditz syndrome, and consider first doing a genetic test to exclude one of these uh, conditions. People presenting joint hypermobility and associated problems such as dislocations, instability, pain and even mild connective tissue fragility 
but who do not fulfill the criteria for hypermobile EDS nor for any other type of EDS or another heritable connective tissue disorder and do, who do not have other genetic or non-genetic causes for their joint hypermobility are now di diagnosed with hypermobility spectrum disorder. So how do we approach uh, a patient in whom there is a suspicion of an ehlers danlos syndrome, for instance, because of the presence of joint hypermobility? Well, we start with a very thorough clinical history taking and examination where we look for clues to generalized tissue fragility affecting at least two body systems. And the 2017 classification defined major and minor clinical criteria for each EDS type that can guide the diagnosis. In addition, family history, of course, is very important as it can give clues to Mendelian inheritance patterns. Additional investigations that can help to rule out differential diagnosis of, of guide towards a specific subtype of EDS really depend on the clinical findings and may include an ultrasound of the heart, an eye exam to look for lens an anomalies, audiometry, skeletal x-rays and bone densitometry. Finally, for all EDS types except for the hypermobile type, the definite diagnosis relies on a molecular confirmation, so a referral to the genetics department for this molecular confirmation can be very important. Most diagnostic studies are carried out using next-generation sequencing of a panel that includes at least the 20 EDS-related genes and perhaps also genes associated with other overlapping connective tissue disorders. These panels are time and cost effective, especially for patients displaying complex or overlapping phenotypes or individuals with no family history of EDS. In conclusion, EDS evolved from a virtually unknown condition to a very heterogeneous group of multisystemic connective tissue disorders. A combination of in-depth clinical evaluation with ultrastructural, biochemical and molecular studies has been instrumental in identifying and classifying these EDS types. As shown, clinical hallmarks help to differentiate between the phenotypes, but molecular analysis is mandatory for accurate diagnosis, management and genetic counselling. Increasing identification of novel genes and biological pathways is giving new insights into the pathogenesis of this disease, which is now considered a collagen-related connective tissue disorder. And finally, and unfortunately, the genetic basis of hypermobile EDS and also of hypermobility spectrum disorder remains elusive. I would like to thank all the patients and their families who contributed over the past year to our work. I would also like to thank my colleagues at the Center for Medical Genetics. And I would also like to thank my international colleagues of the International EDS Consortium and Lara Bloom, the CEO of the EDS Society, who have been uh, very instrumental in revising the EDS classification.